Well, my name is Jeffrey Eugenides. I'm the author of The Virgin Suicides, Middlesex, and The Marriage Plot. Well, it's kind of an impossible question. Um, there's just so many good writers. I think it depends you know, when you're reading the books, how old you are, what's going on in your life. When I was younger, in college, I, I only read difficult books, um, you know, like James Joyce or Proust, things like that. Um, that required a lot of effort and I thought made me seem smarter if I was reading them. I liked experimental fiction, um, mainly. Um, you know, Herman Brock's The Sleepwalkers, thing, books like that. And then as I, as I went into my 20s, I started reading more 19th century literature and some of the great classics like Tolstoy um, and Flaubert and, and all of those writers. And then little by little made my way into some of the American um, canonical 20th century writers like Saul Bellow. And you know, lately I've been reading loads and loads of Alice Munro. So you know, not a, not an experimental writer on the, on the surface. Very different than the kind of stuff I started out with. Um, you know, I've gone from Thomas Pynchon to Alice Munro, and it doesn't mean that um, one is better than the other. But I'm, I'm in a different point in my life, and uh, perhaps reading for a little more um, emotional emotional depth. And I've you know, I have a still fair affection for for realism even in this late day. So that's, I'm reading more, more of those kinds of books now than, than when I was younger. I'm always surprised when I, when I travel the amount of, of writers in other countries that we don't know about. Just, just recently I came across uh, a writer. I've just, just gotten her book. She's, she's very much appreciated in Finland, but her name is Sophie Oksanen and um, I'm looking forward to, to reading her. I didn't know of her existence before having traveled there, but she is gaining kind of a, uh, some, some readership here. I don't like the word sucks, actually. I think the word sucks actually kind of sucks, and um, I don't like to say it. I think it's amazing. People are so used to saying it now, they'll be at a funeral, and they'll, they'll go up to like give their condolences, and they'll say that really sucks to someone who's just lost their husband, you know. I think it's, we've lost a certain dignity um, and a sense of import with, with the prevalence of that word. On the other hand, if you're writing fiction and you're trying to describe the way a person thinks, sometimes you have to use words that are, are debased or that you don't like because that really is the vocabulary of the character. So there's no word that is impure or no word I, I wouldn't use if it was the proper word to convey what the character was thinking or the kind of, uh, the kind of person the character is. No, but I should look into that. It could help. It could help. Um, um, I don't have any rituals except I drink a lot of caffeine, and um, I try to keep my desk not too cluttered because it makes my mind feel feel cluttered. But no, I think you just have to sit down and and uh, get in, get into the um, the practice of having regular hours. But there's no there's no magical potion. I work on a computer and I work in the day because um, I'm you know I'm a, I'm a father. I have a, a daughter, so. The day is when, is when you can write. I usually can't write at night. As it is, I write basically from about maybe 10 to 5 or 6 in the, in the evening. Lately, I've been getting up earlier and trying to stop at 2 or 3 so that I can get emails done and things like that. But it's fairly, uh, you know, just normal working hours like a banker would, would do. Except I'm not getting a bailout. That's the only difference. Transformation is a, is a kind way to put it, what's happened in Detroit. What's, what's happened is a, a, a slow uh, destruction, really, from the beginning of the 20th century to now. Uh, Detroit used to be the fourth largest city in the country. I think there were um, close to two million inhabitants, at least a, at least a million and a half. Now it's down to about 500,000. Um, in my lifetime, I witnessed that depopulation and all the things that go along with it. We've been waiting for a renaissance in Detroit since the Renaissance Center was built in 1977. Um, it's still a, a great city. I have a lot of affection for it. I go back quite often. I'm, I'm actually very ba bad luck for places. I'm Greek and I came from Detroit, so I, I don't know what, what to say, but uh, I seem to have the kind of the opposite of the golden touch wherever I, wherever I go. What am I supposed to say about it? Now, now I feel like I'm, you know, I should have a piece of soap. Uh, here it is. Well, I was here years ago to, to talk to Leonard about this book, so it's nice to, to be back. It's nice the book is still in print. 
and that Leonard still wants to talk to me about it. That makes a good day for me and a good summer. Thank <laughs> you.